Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'd like to talk to you about God's provision. We're told that God will provide for all of our needs, but what does that really look like? Well, first, God's promises don't apply to just anybody or everybody. They apply to believers, specifically to those people who have a relationship with Jesus and acknowledge him as their savior, disciples and followers of Christ. Because think about it, if you want nothing to do with God, if you want God to just leave you alone, if you don't want his help with anything, well, God will respect your wishes. And he will do exactly that. He will leave you alone. Secondly, when God says needs, he means needs. Now, I don't know about you, but Sometimes I have trouble distinguishing needs from wants, or desires, or things that I'm coveting, or things that I envy that other people have. Uh, you know, things that I think that I need, they're really just wants, or luxuries, or conveniences, but they're certainly not needs. Maybe you've had similar trouble in the past, distinguishing wants from needs. You know, technically, God could take things away from me, and my immediate needs would still be provided for, in, in terms of, I think it's called uh, Laszlo's hierarchy of needs, you know, food, clothing, and shelter, and things like that. Um, in 1 Kings chapter 17, the prophet Elijah was living in the midst of a famine that was caused by a multi-year drought. There had not been any rain for several months, and that drought was going to continue for about three years. So we are talking a severe shortage of food and water. Now, Elijah was, was God's man, and God provided for Elijah's needs, but not in the way that one might, might expect, or not in the way that one might hope if we were in Elijah's place. God could have set Elijah up in, in a five-star hotel and serve him distilled water straight from Vermont and give him access to a buffet that would rival any casino. Uh, but that's not what God did. God had Elijah set up shop next to a stream, just a, a small stream. And twice each day, God sent a raven to drop off bread and meat. Now, frankly, I would have preferred the former. You know, I don't know about you, but eating food that came out of a bird's mouth is not what I would call appetizing. Yeah, unless you're a baby bird, and then I guess it's, it's normal. But I'm not a baby bird, and just eating, I mean, eating food out of a bird's mouth, eh gross. And drinking from a stream? I mean, who knows what, what parasites and, and bacteria live in the stream. I mean, you can catch all sorts of sicknesses by drinking directly out of a stream. I mean, maybe Elijah had some equipment, a, a pot to boil water. I, I don't know. But, you know, to make matters worse, that stream, that potentially filthy stream that he was drinking from, it actually dried up. So he didn't even have that stream anymore. So what does that mean? Does that mean that God was, was no longer providing for Elijah's needs? No, actually, God still provided for Elijah's needs. But now it was time for Elijah to move on. It was time for Elijah to move on to a new destination that God had planned for him. So that stream drying up, which on the surface feels like a curse, was actually a blessing. Because if that stream had not dried up, Elijah might have just decided to stay where he was and not move on to a new destination. And that isn't what God wanted for Elijah. And that brings me to my third point. If it's not part of God's plan for you, then it's not a need. Even when it appears to be a need, 
even when it feels like a need, even when the rest of the world and your culture says it's a need. Think of it this way. If you had planned to make counterfeit money, right, you're going to need a real top-of-the-line scanner, and you're going to need like a really good printer. Now, do you think God is going to give you any of that stuff? No, of course not. Now, you might have the means to go out and get that equipment on your own, but that is apart from God. God is not going to help you break his commandments. I mean, why should he? When we do a pretty good job of breaking his commandments on our own without his help. No, God gives us what we need in order that we might stay in obedience to him. He will give us what we need in order for us to continue fulfilling our part for his plan for our lives. Now, I know what that sounds like. It sounds restrictive. I mean, heck, it feels restrictive just to say it. There are times when, if I have to be honest, eh, I'd rather just do my own thing apart from God. But we know that God has the best plans for us. At least we know that, you know, on paper. We know that intellectually. We know that in our heads, if not in our hearts. And this is just one of those times where our head, our minds, our intellect, whatever you want to call it, really just needs to overrule our hearts and our emotions. And we need to take hold of that fact by sheer force of will, that God knows what is best for us. We need to just take hold of that and live like we believe it. There is something to be said for just gritting your teeth, staying in obedience, and as the shoe company slogan says, just do it. Finally, don't get me wrong, okay? God is generous. God frequently gives us things that are not needs things that we don't need and and certainly don't deserve. But the gifts that God bestows on us, well, they are exactly that. They are gifts. And by definition, a gift is not something that you can earn. A gift is not something that you deserve or that you have a right to. And Blessings, particularly gifts of material blessings, those are certainly not promised or guaranteed in God's word beyond our needs to stay in obedience to him. So when our generous God gives you what you need, and especially when he gives you more than you need, thank God for it. Thank God for his generosity. And use some of what he's blessed you with to be a blessing to others. That's part of the reason why he gave it to you, is so that you can be a blessing to others, so that you can be part of God's work that he's accomplishing on earth, to bless others. Thank you again for watching, and may God bless you.